thank you for uh, having us here tonight to just talk for a few minutes about uh, a change that we've made in the uh, breakfast program at, at War Hill High School and we've uh, been very happy with. Uh, and so tonight here with uh, me also is uh, Jane Haley, our Director of Food Services, and then uh, also one of my uh, fine seniors from War Hill, Angela uh, Guerrero Escobar, has uh, joined us tonight to talk about this, uh, the change and uh, the impact for her and some of her peers. Well, the first thing is, why change school breakfast? Uh, if any of the board members or, or anyone else in the audience, if you've visited War Hill prior to February, or I would uh, guess to say any of our, our high schools, uh, typically uh, the breakfast, you've got uh, over a 1,000 students wandering in, worried about getting to class at the start of the day. Uh, some social interaction, but everyone kind of hurried to get to where they need to be. Uh, lots of, uh, you would observe, fast food bags and beverages from uh, outside uh, places. And, you know, just a, a focus of hurry up, get to where you need to be, and really kind of a hurting of students and not a uh, warm or friendly start to the day. And beyond that, uh, we know that a hungry child can't, can't learn. And uh, in the past year, especially for us as high school principals, um, there have been several initiatives to kind of bring this to our attention. Uh, the No Hungry Kid Virginia, and then also uh, the First Lady has uh, started an initiative, um, the Virginia Breakfast Challenge, uh, and particularly designed uh, challenging high school principals throughout the Commonwealth to increase breakfast participation. Uh, and so knowing about those challenges uh, and uh, made me begin to think during the year that uh, maybe this was something that we needed to tackle. Uh, but in all fairness, I, I needed a push. I needed a little nudge. And uh, we have some uh, collaboration from our WJC stakeholders that uh, did that for me. And then Jane came over and visited in February. Actually, we came over a little bit earlier than that because we had to give okay. him a little Maybe more of a push. I'll give yeah. you a little more credit yeah. for that. <laughs> uh, in, in early December, uh, Amy Lazif with uh, the SHIP program and uh, Pam Dannon, the registered dietitian for CNS and SHIP, uh, we went to visit Dr. Carroll and we had some uh, very staggering statistics that were pretty dismal for Warhill with the number of uh, students that we were free feeding breakfast. And we went kind of with their information in hand with the hope of persuading him to let us do something different with breakfast. Um, we ended up being able to do something even greater than we had hoped for. We were hoping that we'd be able to change a few things, maybe put in a, a cart here or there and uh, offer some different um, opportunities for breakfast. And we talked about lots of different things and then we were able to uh, make it end up uh, much greater in our favor, which has uh, increased our numbers substantially. Uh, and enabled us to offer um, even greater items for them to purchase than we had initially thought. So as Jane said, after that, that meeting, uh, they challenged us to really think about uh, how we serve breakfast at War Hill. And uh, with uh, the help of my uh, admin team and some other people at, at War Hill, it led us, you know, as Jane said, we first started looking at just breakfast and maybe extending having a second breakfast option. But as we really uh, dug into the matter, uh, we talked about how could we help that and address some of that issue of climate and welcoming our students and how our uh, teenagers start the day. Uh, and so what we did was we uh, moved our academic enrichment period from the middle of the day uh, to the first part of the day. So now we're serving breakfast from uh, 7 a.m. to 7.50 and providing lots of other opportunities. So uh, what does it look like? Came through the, the line. Uh, one of the things that became a hit with the, was we also, with food services, added uh, some new options uh, with the uh, coffee cart and then smoothies. Um, I think it was, what, our, our first week where we actually burned out the smoothie blender. Yeah, we, uh, we overheated one of the blenders and very quickly learned that we needed to have two so that we could alternate because 
one was not enough. Uh, we had a very overwhelming response to the smoothies, and one, even though it's commercial, just did not keep up. So we've got a, a backup smoothie blender at all times now at, yes. at Warhill. Uh, and there we go. We've got a, a picture of the, the one of the ones that cranks out smoothies for us. Uh, Odessa Jackson, our cafeteria manager, getting the smoothies uh, ready. Now, uh, I'll let Jane explain. Part of the, the benefit of this is now a smoothie with a whole grain, is it yeah. correct? Counts as a meal. Right. If they get, combine it with a whole grain because it is a fruit and yogurt smoothie, it does count as a meal for the breakfast reimbursement so that all students are able to participate. Um, we're up to about 200 breakfast meals per day, which is a, a big increase over what we were doing there before. Um, they actually are making about 300 smoothies a day because they can also purchase the smoothie a la carte. Um, it, the, one of the big reasons that it is such a big success is they're not making them the day before and freezing them ahead. They're actually making them fresh that morning. So they, um, they hit the ground. Well, Odessa actually hits the ground running about 5.30. The rest of the staff gets there about 6.30. They preassemble all of their items the day before so that they're ready to get there and start blending right at 6.30 so that they're ready for the crowd. So again, one of the things uh, they've done is increase the, uh, the breakfast options that we have there. Um, and we also have added the, the coffee cart. And what we've done for our, our students, uh, uh, a few things. By moving AEP to the, uh, the start of the day, uh, we've really tried to give students a uh, choice. Um, on a typical morning now, uh, we probably estimate estimate that we have uh, four to 500 students uh, in the student center. And we've given students the choice of either attending their academic enrichment period, that they're uh, old enough and mature enough uh, to make the choice of whether they need to go seek that remedial help or that accelerated help that they can get from their teacher during that time, or they can choose to start off the day by having breakfast and spending that time in the cafeteria, socializing, catching up with their friends, uh, having that kind of soft start to the day. Um, and that has made a, a huge difference, we think. Um, what we see, uh, we've seen a, a reduce in our number of tardies uh, to first block. Uh, we've had a decrease in uh, skipping and other incidents, uh, incidents uh, during the middle of the day because once we start our day, uh, we're focused on academics. Um, and then along with the idea of student choice, um, throughout the year, um, my senior class had been asking me for uh, a senior privilege. And so we incorporated uh, that into the program also. So uh, one of the lenses that we look at all our students with um, are we call our ABC, attendance, behavior, and credits. And so seniors who are uh, doing well in all three of those areas were eligible now for a pass, and uh, they don't have to uh, be on campus during AEP. And so they can actually arrive, uh, as research shows, that a soft start for them. And as long as they're in first block by the start of uh, 7.50, they get to make that choice. Um, I brought Angela. I wanted to just talk for a moment about the impact as a, a senior, the that pass, and uh, some of the other changes. Hello. Um, it's actually very nice that we have smoothies. Uh, I, every, every morning, I usually, when I wake up, make my protein smoothie. And uh, it's when I get to school before we had the advantage of getting a smoothie, it usually be melted. Uh, usually it, it kind of tastes like juice. But now that we have smoothies at school, it's actually frozen and you can actually taste it as a smoothie. Um, and we have coffee, so I can stay awake caffeine inside me. <laughs> and then we actually have the AP uh, privilege. It's actually very nice. It gives me an extra few minutes to get ready. If I woke up late, I can come in. It's before 7.50, get there in class, be on time. And then um, it's actually very nice that we have a lot of other things instead of like little small things like we have the naked juices too. Those are really good too. And we have um, cookies. <laughs> and then um, it is really, it's really nice for other students. And, and my friends and I, it's, 
it's a small meal because we don't really eat in the mornings, but it's a very nice thing that we can just have something to grab and go. And we can not like have to munch and have crumbs all over each other. And just as uh, we put a few quick numbers up there for you to, to show some of the impact just uh, since February, uh, as Jane said, typically they were serving uh, around 75 breakfast meals uh, before. Now it's uh, 200 or more each morning. Our free and reduced lunch, lunch participation in uh, the breakfast program has increased from 20% to 42% of those students. Our serving window has increased uh, up to 50 minutes now. And our first block tardies, uh, you know, just uh, in a short period of time, uh, we've seen a uh, significant uh, reduction in the, not only the number of tardies, but the actual number of students who are having tardies to class. Uh, and we see that as a, as a positive also. So, so uh, come on out to, uh, to breakfast. Uh, Jane, we couldn't uh, provide samples tonight. I, I tried to convince her to do that. Uh, but you know, we were unable to do that, so the next best thing I can do is uh, offer an extended invitation to uh, each of you to come on out, and uh, I'll tell Jane. We'll tell you that Jane will buy it for you. So. Yeah. <laughs>